In the previous video, we had studied about the physical properties of alkanes. In this video, we are going to be talking about chemical properties. As we know, alkanes are not very reactive and that is why they were also called as paraffins. So they do not undergo a chemical reaction in the presence of an acid, a base, an oxidizing agent or even a reducing agent. So they require specific conditions for a reaction to take place. So in this chapter, you will be learning about substitution reaction, com combination, sorry, combustion reaction, controlled oxidation, isomerization, aromatization, reaction with steam and pyrolysis. And in this video, we are going to be talking about substitution reaction. So substitution reaction, as the name suggests, means that one something is getting replaced by another. So let's take, for example, the first reaction over here. Okay, here we have methane, which is CH4. It is reacting with chlorine gas in the presence of HMO, that is, sunlight or diffuse sunlight rather but that's not what we're talking about let look at the product found over here the product is ch3cl so this means one of the hydrogen atoms has been replaced by a chlorine atom so it has been substituted so here a substitution reaction has taken place so generally alkanes do undergo um a substitution reaction and many a times you have one or more hydrogen atoms in the alkane getting replaced by a another group and this can be dependent i mean based on the reagent that is being used it can be a nitro group a halogen or even sulfonic acid so but however our lower alkanes do not undergo reaction uh, or rather do not undergo nitration as well as sulfonation it's only the higher ones that do but lower ones do undergo halogenation so, halogenation is what we are going to be studying about in detail in substitution reaction. So, right. So, in this reaction, it takes place in the, at a high temperature at about 506. I'll just write down the conditions over here. So, you have temperature about 563 to 773 Kelvin. Okay. And it is in the presence of diffused sunlight. And it's also can be done in the presence of ultraviolet light. So these are the reaction conditions. And over here we have a set of reactions where chlorine, as I told you, the substitution reaction can involve the replacement of one or more than one hydrogen atoms. And that is exactly what has happened over here. So methane is reacting with chlorine for us to get chloromethane and HCl. The next reaction is with this chloromethane is going to undergo a reaction with chlorine again in the presence of sunlight for us to get dichloromethane then we're getting trichloromethane and then we're getting tetrachloromethane so this has happened in a sequential process one hydrogen has been replaced in each step it has been substituted the next one over here is ethane is undergoing a reaction with chlorine in the presence of the sunlight diffuse sunlight to give us chloromy ethane so three sorry it got erased but yeah so it's chloroethane so in this uh, case we're talking about a halogen atom right so, a halogen molecule rather so there is a particular way that these also undergo reactivity so re the reaction so the rate of reaction is the highest for fluorine then you have chlorine then bromine then iodine so fluorine it, the reaction takes place very quickly and uh, in case of chlorine i mean it's faster than chlorine chlorine faster than bromine bromine faster than iodine and for fluorine in case of fluorine this particular reaction is too violent to even control it okay hmm. so this uh, when we are using fluorine as the halogen molecule this reaction is too violent iodine is the opposite it is way too slow and so what they do is they are an oxidizing agent now let's look at a reaction we're taking methane again over here it is reacting with iodine 
Okay, and since this is a reversible reaction, I will be putting the reversible arrows. And we get CH3I, iodomethane and HI. Now, this reaction takes place in presence of an oxidizing agent. The reason they do that is to make sure this gets used up. So, the HiO3, which is acting as an oxidizing agent, is reacting with the HI, which is formed, hydrogen iodide, for us to get three molecules of iodine and three molecules of water. So, the oxidizing agent will make sure that the reaction, the HI, which is formed, is basically getting used up for us to get back iodine. This will make sure the reaction moves in the forward direction. Now, the reaction, the rate of the reaction not just depends upon the halogen atom, but it also depends upon the nature of carbon atoms. So, in case, in I mean, based on that, so the highest is going to be for tertiary, secondary and then primary. This is for the carbon atom. So that was the introduction of the substitution reaction of alkanes. Okay. Now we're, we just spoke about how there is, uh, I mean the rate of the reaction is for halogen atoms and or rather halogen molecules and the rate of the reaction with respect to the nature of the carbon atom. Next, we will be looking at the mechanism of these particular, this particular reaction rather. Just give me a second. So, let's look at the mechanism of the substitution reaction. So, this follows the free radical mechanism. So it's a free radical process, which basically it's it just means that you have a free radical as the intermediate in our chemical reaction. Now this consists of three steps. Okay, initiation, initiation. Second is this is the initiation means it's starting the reaction. Next is going to be continuing the reaction. So that's propagation. And the third step is going to be termination. Right. So, for each of these, let me put the reaction down first and then we'll discuss about, you know, what it has. So, the first one is initiation. Okay. So, what we did, we took our alkane and we took chlorine and then... We are, you know, hoping for them to undergo a chemical reaction. So, first what happens is, the chlorine, that is Cl2, in the presence of, you know, H mu, which is going to be light, undergoes something called as homolysis. If you remember, uh, Homolysis is where we denote it with half-headed arrows and we know a bond is formed when two electrons are present, right? And in homolysis, one electron goes to one of the atom, the other electron goes to the other atom. Heterolysis, on the other hand, means that this bond breaks and that leads to the formation of ions. Homolysis gives us free radicals. So here we have the homolysis of the chlorine molecule taking place. So we will denote it with a half head arrow. So here you have this electron transferring here and the other one going to the other chlorine atom. So this leads to the formation of two chlorine free radicals. Now you can think, okay, uh, why can't the, you know, so methane is CH4, right? So why can't this also undergo homolysis? We also studied that uh, the electronegativities are quite close and because of that they are non-polar so they can also undergo homolysis, right? But that's not the case because these bonds are actually stronger and so they do not undergo homolysis in the presence of these conditions. So the CH bond is not undergoing homolysis, it's only the Cl, Cl bond which is undergoing homolysis for us to get the chlorine free radicals. Now, what happens is, next, you have propagation. 
So propagation, there are two things that take place during propagation. Okay, the first one is the attack by chlorine free radical. So in the first case, you have the chlorine free radical attacking our methane. So methane, you have four atoms of hydrogen, right? And what happens is this chlorine free radical is going to come and attack. Now, what here, one of the hydrogen atoms is going to, okay, I think this was probably confusing. Okay, so one of the hydrogen atoms is going to get kicked out. And here, that is getting kicked out in the form of a radical because the Cl came and attacked and because of that, our CH bond is undergoing homolysis and after it underwent homolysis, it led to the formation of a CH3 free radical and HCl. So they've both these free radicals combined for us to get a bond and that is HCl. So the methyl free radical basically, uh, sorry, the meth, uh, chlorine free radical reacted with methane and it cleaved the CH bond and this also underwent homolysis for us to get a methyl free radical and HCl. Now there is another step that takes place. Here what happens is the methyl free radical it is not happy that, you know, it just has an electron. It wants to form a bond because carbon wants four bonds always. So what it does is it reacts with another molecule of chlorine. So first, the chlorine free radical is reacting with methane, the molecule. But the methyl free radical, which is formed, also wants to make sure it has four bonds. And because it wants that, it reacts with another molecule of chlorine. Notice I'm telling chlorine and not, you know, chlorine free radical. It's chlorine molecule. So what happens is because it's going to come and attack, this bond is going to get homolyzed. And because it is getting homolyzed, you will have a new bond between the CH, sorry, the carbon and chlorine and this gives us another chlorine free radical so to basically make it even more clearer it went from being this free radical to you know basically ensuring that chlorine underwent homolysis and that formed a new bond with the chlorine free radical that was formed. This in turn leaves another chlorine free radical in the mixture. Now the chlorine and the methyl free radical will keep repeating these steps constantly. Right. And this in turn leads to the various types of products that can probably form. So what an another way this can also happen is by basically now the CH3Cl. This is CH3Cl, right? So the CH3Cl can react with the chlorine free radical okay and this again can give us the sorry CH2Cl where the carbon again becomes a free radical right and HCl Okay, and now this CH2Cl will again react the same way this one did. So this will form, react with another chlorine molecule. And all of this is again going to be leading to the formation of CH2Cl2 dichloromethane plus Cl free radical. Because here also you have the homolysis of the chlorine molecule taking place. And next is the third one, third part of this reaction is termination. Termination means ending, right? So what happens here is after a few 
you know this keeps taking place and at one point you will not have you mean the amount of reactants will decrease and so you'll not have enough amount of reactants i guess or like the concentration of reactants is going to decrease and so what happens is these are the following you know these are the reactions that will take place and the reaction will basically stop so two chlorine free radicals is combining to give us a chlorine molecule another way is two methyl free radicals can react and they can combine to give us ethane and the last one is the methyl free radical reacting with chlorine free radical for us to get chloromethane so the formation of ch3l ch3cl shows that our product is a meth chloromethane and here this b shows that the other possible product is also ex i mean also exists and that's ethane so to recap uh, first of all the free radical mechanism consists of sorry substitution or halogenation reaction of alkanes undergoes by the free radical mechanism process the free radical mechanism consists of three steps initiation propagation termination initiation means to start so for this reaction to start what it does is the chlorine molecule in the presence of sunlight will undergo homolysis homolysis always leads to the formation of free radicals and this is why we get two chlorine free radicals now propagation means to continue so what happens is this chlorine free radical will come and attack the methane and when it attacks the methane it makes sure that one of the bonds between the carbon and the hydrogen is broken again by homolysis for us to get the methyl free radical now the hydrogen will also get kicked out as a free radical right so because of that that hydrogen atom and the chlorine atom will together form hcl next the methyl free radical does not want to exist like that so what it does it goes and attacks another molecule of chlorine and in turn it also ensures that the chlorine molecule underwent homolysis for us to get a chlorine free radical and leads to the formation of ch3cl molecule now this ch3cl molecule can also react okay it can undergo continuous chain reactions that's what in the beginning of this video we had like a set of reactions on the side of the board remember so ch3cl is undergoing a reaction with the chlorine free radical it is in turn leading to the formation of this methyl chloro free radical or chloromethyl free radical and hcl this free radical is again undergoing a reaction with chlorine and it's making sure that underwent undergoes homolysis and that gives us a free radical chlorine over here as well as ch2 cl2 dichloromethane the last step is termination termination means to stop so there will come a point when almost all the reactants are getting used up and so you know the reaction has to stop so these are the various reactions that could take place in the end first one is chlorine two chlorine free radicals combining to give us the chlorine molecule the other is two methyl free radicals combining to give us methane and the third is where a methyl free radical combines with a chlorine free radical for us to get chloromethane with that we're done with the substitution reaction of alkanes in the next video we will be talking about the oxidation reactions of alkanes